Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. You know, I got this uh, response in one of my videos the other day. I figure I'll read it to you and we'll see if we can answer it. Uh, it's from EP6026. I'm a 39 year old purple belt that competed the last time 12 years ago as a blue belt. I was off and on training for many years. Hmm, sounds like me. I'm married with three boys, nine, six, and one. Ooh, that's a young one. Uh, works as a firefighter and I want to get into competing again, but I'm having an internal battle to do this or not I kind of feel selfish because jujitsu already takes time away from my family and now with competing I'm focusing more on myself than the kids and it feels uh, it's, that's what it feels like I kind of feel like those competing days are far behind me and that competing in master's divisions doesn't seem to have the same prestige as placing in adult men's divisions. I feel pressure to compete um, because of the school I train at, and I'm constantly reminded it will make uh, me better, but at what cost? And is that cost even worth it? Even if I decide to become a school owner as a black belt, will it even really matter? Okay, so, and I've said this in other videos in the past about competing. Competing is something that I always recommend somebody does at least once, but I don't strongly recommend it, meaning I don't push it. If, if that's something that's in your heart, then, then do it, right? I, I'm all about there are other priorities in life ahead of jiu-jitsu. Now, being that, uh, you know, I, I do operate a school, it, it is a high priority in my life, but it doesn't need to be a high priority in your life. So let's... Uh, Here's an example, an analogy that I think will really give you an idea on on how to prioritize. Really, because that's that's what it is. I mean, you're feeling conflicted because you training to your to, to what you feel you need to train, uh, time and level wise uh, to be to be able to compete, especially as a 39 year old competing in the adult division. Uh, you're gonna need to to work harder than than what you think you 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 would, especially if you want to win it all. If you want to win it all and you want to be a champion in the adult level, which is under 30 uh, divisions, then as a 39 year old, you do kind of have your work cut out for you, uh, which is what the masters divisions are for. I think uh, depends on the on the promotion, but I know they got masters one from 30 to 35, masters two from 35 to 39. So you'd be masters two. I mean, you wouldn't even be masters one, right? You know, at your age. Now that doesn't mean you can't compete at masters one. You can compete at whatever one you want. You just can't go up in age. You know, so you can't go masters three yet until you're 40. Uh, but you can do all the lower ones because the lower ones are harder. Um, and you now are married, you have a family, and you have a career. So those things need to take precedence over your, even your training, let alone your competing. So let me go over with you this one example I heard a while back. It was um, uh, a particular speaker. He was in front of, I guess, a bunch of college kids. And the question had to do with time management. How do you possibly manage your time and get everything that you need to get done in life? Because when, when you really think about it, very successful people, they are excellent at prioritizing their time. And they can get more stuff done than a typical person. Now, you can also do it with more hours working, which if you have a family, it, it's broken up many a family because... Um, you know, husband and father is looking to make a great living for the family and he has a career to do that and ends up spending so much time working that he doesn't get to spend any time with his wife and kids, ends up being a bad situation, family gets broken up and um, all he has left is his career, right? So we don't want that to happen to you. So let's kind of think about things. Um, this speech that I saw had to do with, uh, he had a jar. I think it was like a gallon sized jar. And next to the jar were a bunch of rocks, or like, you know, this size, let's call it baseball, softball sized rocks. And next to that was a pile of uh, gravel, pea gravel, right, as we call it. And next to that was a container full of sand, and next to that was a container full of water. So the, the, the question was, and he was asking the audience, how do I fit all of this stuff into this jar? And people would kind of have their ideas. Oh, do this, do this, do this. And it, it's kind of a common sense thing, but yet the people who did bother to speak up got it wrong. The correct way to do it is you take this jar, this empty jar, 
and you put the biggest things in it first. In this case, they were rocks. So he put the rocks in there, and then the next thing he says, you know, the rock, you know, the jar is now full of rocks. So the next question is, okay, so now that we've got all the rocks in there, how do we fit all this other stuff in? What would go in next? Well, the next things were the pea gravel because they're the next uh, next in size. So you took that whole container of pea gravel and poured it in the in the jar with the rocks, shook it a little bit, right, to get the, the pea gravel to fall to the bottom and fill the, the, the cracks and the crevices that are created by the bigger rocks. So now he's got that in there. So now you kind of get what's going on, right? So now that he's got the rocks in there, he's got the pea gravel in there. Now, of course, he asks the crowd, what next? They go, the sand, right? So he pours the sand in, shakes that around. The sand goes into the, the cracks and crevices that were left by both the rocks and the pea gravel. And then finally, he poured the water in there. So now, what does this all mean? Okay, let's think about what the rocks are in your life. EP 626, I think that's what it was. Um, first of all, you have to work and you have to sleep. Without those two, you don't have a roof over your head and without sleep, you're gonna die at some point, right? So um, you're, gonna, you're gonna go to work and it, you know, you're a fireman, so it's not uncommon for firemen to have a one day on, two day off schedule, which means that uh, it's because you're on a 24 hour shift, which, which means that you work what? 10 days out of a month, whereas a typical person has to work 20 days out of the month, right? Five days a week, four weeks in a month, you know, actually probably about 21, sometimes 22 days in a month. But you have to work about 10, maybe 11 days in a month, which means that you have 19 to 20 days to do other stuff, okay? So your your big rocks are your, your work, and you need to get some sleep. So I don't know if you're in a busy uh, station, or if you're in a slow station, if you're in a if you're in a busy one, then of course um, you're gonna have to. You might work 24 hours straight, come home, and you're gonna have to sleep. So you need to get that rock in the jar, right? Your your work is in the jar, your sleep is in the jar. But now you have a wife and three kids. So once you wake up, do you go and train? Maybe, right? But your priority needs to be your family in this case. Um, so that's where you go take the kids out to do stuff, you go on a date with your wife, you or just hang out and just even if you just watch TV with your wife, just spend time with her, right? You you do that. So that's another, you know, couple of rocks that you put into that jar. Now that's not to say you don't have time to do anything else, right? But let's say other than that you have tasks to do. You have to take the car to the shop to get an oil change or a wheel alignment or new tires or you have to go buy some clothing for you know one of the kids right your wife works too maybe i don't know um it's a little bit easier if she doesn't work but if she does work then you know her rock is you know a, a, a you know her big rock would be work as well so now you both have to have to you know negotiate this uh this path here so um but let's say she's a stay-at-home mom. Let's say you're lucky enough to have her be a stay-at-home mom. So she's got time to do other stuff. Maybe some of the stuff that you need to take care of, she could take care of when you're at work. I'm not sure. But, you know, she's got three children she's got to manage. Um, and then even when two are in school, one is not. So that could be, you know, that could be a major time rock for her as well, the one-year-old. And when you come home, you'd like to be able to spend some time with the one-year-old separate from the other two who may be in school. So let's say you spend some time with the one-year-old and this is during while during the time while the kids are in school and you're off, right? So maybe you and your wife have a nice breakfast together, have some lunch, I don't know, with the baby, and then you excuse yourself and go train in a day class uh, for a couple of hours. And then, you know, come back home, shower, maybe get some rest. So now it's taking about three hours of your time, right? So it's not it's not a small time commitment just to just to go to class and train. Hopefully your school has daytime classes, which would be perfect with kids in class, right? Or with um, with a work a wife working a day job, right? So now you have time with the one year old. Um, you might need to find uh, a few hours to get a sitter to come in, which you know a few hours. It's not that much, right? But it allows you to go and train, and you're training during the day versus during the night when the kids are home, right? Time that you could spend helping the kids with baseball or even jujitsu or whatever whatever stuff that you like to do with the kids. 
right? So the big rocks, right? Work, sleep, uh, and the kids and the wife. Now the, 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 the pebble, the pebbles, like I mentioned, you know, errands that you could run, you know, car stuff, shopping, um, you know, hanging out with, with mom or dad or, or whatever, you know, and then the, the training really is the sand, right? Because after you get all the stuff you need to get done, then you train. Now, of course, people say, well, I want to prioritize my training. Well, you can, but now you're coming to the point where uh, you're going to be at a tug of war, so to speak, where you're going to have to take away from a more important situation, a rock item or a pea gravel item, so that you can train a sand item, right? So once you get all that those stuffs done, your your work, your sleep, your family time, your errands, Right, and that's all done. Now you can train. Now you find that time to train. You look, okay, hmm, what, let's see, it's about two o'clock. Is there any class available at two o'clock? Well, it turns out there isn't. But you've got mats, so you call a buddy. You know, maybe another fireman who's off, who you've, who you train with, or maybe you even helped to train. You taught them whatever you knew, whatever. Hey, let's get together and train. You know, I got a couple hours. What are you doing? Okay, I can train too. So you guys train. You get up by four o'clock. Kids are done with school. So now, you've uh, you know, you've gotten all the big rock stuff off. You got the pebble stuff off. You got the sand done, and really, what is the water now? The water is your competing, right? Competing is not as important as training. Training is is what it's really all about, at least to me. Competing you do when everything else has has been done and you've earned that time to go compete. Now, do you need to train more to compete? Yeah, maybe. If you're well trained and that your your goals in competing are realistic, meaning I just want to do it because I like the feeling of competing. I don't like the feeling of losing, but I sure love the feeling of winning. But am I willing to take away from my job, from my family, or sleep less so that I can do the training. Well, what happens? I mean, if you do that, you know, then maybe you get demoted, maybe you lose your job. I don't know. Um, you, you don't get any sleep, or you're not going to be any good anyway if you don't sleep. Or you take time away from your family. Okay, well, you know, maybe your family ends up breaking up because of your your obsessive training just for the competition, then then yeah, then it's not worth it. But if you put it in its rightful spot, meaning it's a lower priority item in your life at 39 years old with a career, with a wife, and with young children, then whatever result happens from competing, that's the result. You win, great. There's nothing better than winning. If you lose, oh well. You know, as long as you tried your best and as long as you had fun doing it, if you didn't have fun competing, then yeah, maybe your competition days are over. But this is how you can fit them all in there. And I'm confident you can. At any rate, uh, for those of you who are watching, tell me what you think. You know, put in the comments below. Uh, how have you been able to navigate life and still compete? and you know prolifically successfully whatever you want right how have you been able to both train and compete in jujitsu i hope that kind of helped you guys and i hope if you made it this far you could please hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't and if you talk to somebody who has been in the same dilemma as you by all means, please share the video with them or share on your Facebook page or Instagram page, whatever. You know, that all helps the channel. And the more we can help the channel, the more I can keep giving you guys great free content. Anyway, uh, you can come visit us at our studios. We have two, one in Flower Mound, Texas, which is Dallas-Fort Worth, and one in Laguna Hills, California, which is Irvine, California. So... Uh, you can also visit us online at kamajujitsuonline.com. Um, I know our website went down a little while ago, but we've remedied that, and we should be good to go as well as our, for our online content as well as our website. In the meantime, that's all I got for you. Stay tuned for the next video. Take care. Happy training. Bye now.